Eugene, I need to ask you a question. Sounds serious. What is it? Go ahead. Would you rather train for and run a road mile, like hard out, full noise road mile, or run 100 miles? Oh, oh, that is, I mean, I'm torn. Give me more information. What if you could do both? <gasps> Have you been at the hand sanitizer again, Matt, in the hospital? Not since New Year's, but besides, I'm talking about the spectacle. It's first of its kind running festival taking place in Nelson between Friday the 13th and Sunday the 15th of December. 2024. Nelson, I mean, it's it's the South Island's hat. It's delicious. It's such a beautiful place and it has some of the best trail running in the hemisphere and it's just like, it's generally beautiful. It is stunning. Fuck it too. The spectacle is, it is a spectacle. It's got both road and trail events and a festival vibe from 10k to 100 mile on the trails and a bunch of road events from community miles, 5k's to an elite road mile that the organisers are going to be bringing people who you, who we usually watch on our screens to the streets. The spectacle.co.nz for details and get training. And they're off. Here we go. Welcome to the DCR 8 station number 11. I'm Matt Raymond. And I am Eugene Bingham. Tiana Koto Katoa. No, Mike. Oki Mike. How are you doing, Matt Raymond? I'm tasting fitness. Tasting fitness. That's how I'm doing. That's, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a good feeling. Tasting fitness. Maybe that'll be the title of my book. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> speaking of, but um, no, just building up uh, to some in, some events we've got coming up and events I've got coming up, and uh, just starting to feel that the the wheels on the bus are going round and round. So today's run. Is hill repeats yesterday, and today's run long run today backing up, and I just. Just that little taste on your, t- you know, you, that, that little taste oh, on your tongue. You're like, hang on a second, yeah. this is starting to go right. How are you, man? Yeah, I think we talked just before we came on the show that I think you might have cracked it. I think I might be, what is it, transfiguring? No, transfiguration? No. What, is that the word? Transforming. Transforming into a pirate. Because I've got my, my heel that's gone, uh, waiting for some surgery. My knee went. And then I had my eye injury last weekend that I talked about on DCR. This week it wasn't getting any better, and so I ended up with an eye specialist to give me an eye patch. So we're one parrot away from pirate dim, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Chuck a dose of COVID in there, and I've had a Chuck cracking a couple of months. I tell Absolutely. you, absolutely, <laughs> Jack Sparrow over here. Oh, dude! Luckily, it, we've got heaps of things to look forward to, haven't we? Yeah, we do. We do. So why don't you, why don't you run those down for yeah. us? Well, first of all, we're heading to W2K in July, uh, and we love W2K. You've been how many times? So, this will be my fourth time doing it. So I did the inaugural year. I did the ultra marathon with you in 2019 when I found, and I found today one of the favorite photos that I've ever, yes. ever seen of us. That's hilarious. Um, and then we did the uh, underwater year and this will be the marathon again, all the 45K. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, super excited Super about exciting. That. So we're going to head down in July. Then we, of course, are going across the Blue Mountains in August for the, fir- the Fiery Stair Challenge. It's on August 30 and 31 on the Ferber Stairs. It's going to be incredible. That was like, I was trying to like going up some stairs. People having a crack at 24 hours as well. And I th- Not me though. No, you, you got out of it. <laughs> Although did you see in the chat, oh no, you... When I saw Gavin, he was like, oh, did, was it in the chat? Was it face-to-face? I can't remember. But he was like, oh, we had a donor lined up. Oh, yeah. And I just, I pulled the pin like that. And oh. I'm so glad that I did that because. Man, that was a just, lucky escape. Yeah, It was. Yeah. So we're going to do a podcast <laughs> on the Thursday over there. And then you're going to be getting into the actual stairs on Friday and Saturday. And I'll just be running around with a mic and amping things up. And there's a shit ton of parrots. So you'll yeah. be well at home. You can get well a sulfur crested Cockatoo yeah. on your shoulder. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to Kepler. We are. In December. Back to Kepler. 
back to Kepler. Super was stoked that about that. Number six for you? Uh, seventh start, yeah. So hopefully sixth finish. Yeah, there's big things going on, isn't there? There's there's lots and lots of stuff in the works, and we've got some changes, uh, just a few changes, tweaks to announce here. We're going to start putting the Aid Station podcast into the DCR feed on a Saturday after it comes out. So the way to keep getting it early and ad-free is to be a paid subscriber to the DCR Aid Station crew. And of course, paid subscribers also get a bunch of other things, including the newsletter and giveaways, speaking of which. Yeah, so we are giving away an entry to The Spectacle, which is a new running festival taking place in Whakatū, Nelson, from Friday, December 13 to December the 15th, the Sunday. There's a variety of distances and terrains from 10k to 100 miles on the trails. There's also relays and, a, and, a, and there's a mile on the roads, which is going to have sort of everything from the community races to elites running it. And when we talk about elites, we're talking about the fast people. If you sign up as a subscriber to the DCR aid station, you'll be in the draw for an entry and you'll have two chances if you're a paid subscriber. We're going to announce the winner on June 26th. So you've got a bit of time to sign up. And if you want to know more about the race and the festival itself, you can check out www.thespectacle.co.nz. And we've also got something a bit special this week. We've got a little bijou interview it returning champion Marie Leith coach Marie from Go Run Girls now she was our guest way back on episode 102 and she recently got in contact with us to share that she has co-written a book with a bunch of other wahini toa from Aotearoa around their running and it's called Finding Her Stride it's a compilation of the stories of these women we should probably get into this interview because it's got some quite important stuff we need to share Turning champion, episode 102 alumni, Marie Leith, welcome back to Dirt Church Radio. What have you been up to since we last spoke? Well, uh, yeah, just been, of course, going to events, coaching, running, trying to be a mum <laughs> and a wife, doing all the things. Yeah, and my new exciting project uh, with trying to bring out a running book. Seems like another, like, I remember specifically the timeline of when we spoke to you, you know, and you did your lockdown ultra marathon. That seems like another world, doesn't it? I know. it. That was such a long time. It feels like such a long time ago. What a feat. And I've definitely gone on to do quite a few uh, other ultra challenges since that time so yeah I've been I've been busy but I think that homemade ultra really helped to for me to know myself what else I could actually do you know if you're doing at home with no finish line I I had a toilet paper finish line but (laughs) you know when you don't have that pressure of an event that taught me a few things so it was really cool that I got through that and then did more with it. Speaking of ultra events, having a book project, now that's a huge thing. Tell, tell, us, tell us about what it is and, and where the idea came from. So basically, Finding Her Stride is a book that I've thought about for years. Originally, I thought about doing my own story, uh, which is still there. I still have that idea, but I figured with the amount of women that I know in the, in the running community over the years that have had really touched me, have got inspirational stories. And I think I resonate more with a woman who, you know, don't have it all together and that find it really hard to train. Just with, you know, knowing those people, I thought, you know what? Go Run Girls is all about community. And I would like to bring out a book. Why don't I just see if I can actually do this. And so um, it's really bringing a dream of mine to life. So what it is, is it's a collaboration of short, punchy stories from wahine around New Zealand that uh, it's the pinnacle moment in running. So, I mean, we have many, but I asked them to choose one that meant a lot to them so that they could naturally talk about it and share that with New Zealand. But yeah, I just wanted to to grab those stories and put them together in a little book if you like one that you can have on your bedside table at night and get inspiration instantly from so that in a nutshell is is what I've created and I think that I I worked really hard at deciding who I would approach in New Zealand with stories that would inspire I wanted a 
broad range of women, you know, from everyday runners to back of the packers and mid packers like myself to elite runners as well. So I, I wanted to cover a little bit of everything so that my readers could maybe, yeah, feel connected to one of those stories. As I believe it's the first book in New Zealand of its kind with all these different stories in there. So I am surprised that it has not been done yet. However, me and my journey with the book, learning how to write, doing all of this social media to try and raise the funds for the book, it's a hard job and I'm stressed a lot, (laughs) and the writing process, I'm good at posts and and emails, but yeah, this has taught me a lot, so I do realise that not everyone's going to bring out this kind of a book. Much like an ultramarathon, or much like any running project, or any goal that you have, or process that you have, there's a first step, right? What was the, and I realise I'm the outlier in the room, but what was the first, what was the first thing that you did when you thought about, like, or who was the first person you, you approached? So uh, the first person I approached was a book coach. And so I didn't take this lightly. I thought, if I'm going to bring out a book of any type, I need to do my research. I need to study, learn some new things, because I didn't know a lot about writing, especially not bringing out a book that's going to be published. So last year, on my journey of writing, I hired a book coach actually up in Whangaparaua where I live and went through uh, three or four months um, worth of work with her working on how to create a story, how to structure it so you've actually got to start a middle and an end (laughs) so what I write I can go off on a tangent and yeah just get lost in a few things so actually sitting down with the coach was the best thing for me. So I did that first and to understand the process at also behind the, you know, bringing out the book, which is that you only not only write it, but you have to have that drafting process. You have to have uh, an editor there, got to have uh, the book cover designer. You've got to have the structure designer, format designer. There's so many different things you have to think about when you try and self-publish, which is really what I'm trying to do. So that w- was the first definitely the first stop and I invested in that and it was the best thing I think because now I have an idea of what I'm doing that's so important isn't it having a having a plan yeah yes so how what's the process in terms of the people that you've approached like do you just say to them and say you know do you give them a brief do you give them some parameters or would you just say go for it well it was a bit of a mix because you've got to remember that who I approach they're runners They're not necessarily writers, authors. That's not their jam. They're good at what I perceive them to be as good at running and being consistent and smashing some amazing goals. So it was a big thing for me to ask them and also to give them some guidance around how to write. So again, that's where the book coach was really good because she would help me with that structure that I need to provide for the uh, authors. And so it was... It was really fun to approach these women and ask them, but also for them not to feel like all, uh, you know, closed up and think, I'm I'm not a writer, so I can't really do this. I like what you're asking me to do, but I can't do it. And I think that that is a barrier that I needed to help them and guide them through. So we've got 19 stories all ready to go um, because I worked on this last year with my authors. So I, I wanted to have all the stories collected before I then did the next step, which is getting the editor involved who is also, yeah, ready to go once all the pledges are made. Can you, without, I mean, this is a little bit like, can you choose your favourite child, but do you have any any favourites <laughs> that you want to share or maybe one or two? And obviously, you know, you don't want to, you want people to buy the book, so you don't want to give away too much. But can you give us yep. a, little, a little sneak peek of what people might expect in the book? Okay, so keep in mind that it's just kind of one time in their lives that I've got them to write the chapter um, for the book. So, and I've got 19 of us in there. So it's quite hard to choose, but uh, for tonight, I thought that might be a question. So I wrote down some of the stories that you can expect. And I just wanted to be really open, broad, 
um, non-judgmental and to cover all the areas throughout uh, New Zealand. So I've got Caro Oram from Wellington and she uh, went through breast cancer and then worked through, her, you know, what she had to go through, her treatment and then to come back into running. So it was important for me to get her story because, yeah, unfortunately cancer is one of those things that uh, touches a lot of us. And by the way, <laughs> once the book is um, out there and we've got our first run done. The profits do um, get split between Speed Freaks and the Cancer Research Foundation of New Zealand. But that's once this is nothing to do with the Pledge Me campaign. I just want to make that clear. So Caro's in it, got some elites in there. So we've got the lovely Fiona Havis, who, yeah, is our competitive trial runner in New Zealand, which I'm sure you've had her on. And also Emma Tim, uh, Timmis, who is doing an amazing fundraiser for Speed Freaks at the moment, uh, running seven days on a treadmill. But I love her enthusiasm and her go get her attitude and just breaking Guinness World Records all the time. And I've also got like uh, uh, Joanne James, who is an amazing lady. She's 73 and does her local park runs every week without fail. And I, I just think that's really cool. But I've also reached out to professionals, you know, that might commute for their job and how do they fit training in and smash these amazing goals while they've got to manage everything and commute to work? I've got some farmers in there. That was close to my heart <laughs> because, you know, the, the ladies farming out there, they have to, and I've worked with a couple of them, they're out shearing so they can't <laughs> go and do this two-hour run that I've set. And I love their mindset and attitude to, you know, do what they can when they can, so... Yeah, that's just a little glimpse of what's in there and, of course, my own journey as well. Incredible. Look, I mean, how – this is helping, but how, how do we help? What's the, what's the bottom line? I mean, you, you are crowdfunding this because obviously there's a certain amount of yeah. um, process and money that goes into this project. I mean, what are we, what are we looking at here? Um, so I'd love for people to jump on and pledge. How you can help is by going on my Pledge Me link. So – that in itself, the campaign was huge for me because as you, you'll see when you click on the link, uh, because I have to raise $24,000 for my project, that I had to come up with all these different ways, these incentives to get you guys <laughs> to pledge. And the great thing about Pledge Me is that you can put some fun incentives in there. So I've got some some running events, event tickets are still there. There's, if you're in Auckland, I'd love you to come to my um, launch party, which is in November in Takapuna, that will be in there. There's a lot of options for coaching, for businesses to then uh, pledge a package and they get, you know, access to my platforms, which I've built over 10 years um, so it's I've had to be quite savvy in the way that I think but honestly the biggest seller the biggest one so far has been the pre-sale of my book so that is at a you know it's $45 including that includes postage and that's pro that's probably what we'll end up um, selling the book for once the first run is done. So t two questions first question can we come to your book launch please? No oh pressure. yes. <laughs> Yeah, that would be so cool. Can you do a live? Why not? <laughs> love yeah. that. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Uh, second thing is, um, is the goal to sell it, I mean, the goal to sell it strictly through your, uh, I mean, some of the greatest running books were, you know, Feet in the Clouds, Born to Run, started off the authors respectively selling them out of their boots of their car at races. I mean, is this is what you're looking for? You're going to be doing it grassroots or are you looking to sort of any bookstores to pick it up or what's the... Basically anywhere. <laughs> it will be, because I turn up to lots of events with my husband, Steph, so it will be back of the uh, car, you know, car boot styles. Um, I'll set up a little table if someone will let me. I will be pushing it on all my platforms, yeah. And, and if a bookstore will let me in... <laughs> Then totally, I'll, I'll try that as well. But most of it, I can see, will be online through my website. And yeah, so I, I might even do a, a book tour around New Zealand. It just all depends. I really need everyone's help for this, please. If anyone knows Pledge Me, I my goal is 
24,000. However, if I don't get that exact goal, I get nothing. So it's an all or nothing thing. I'm nearly up to 11,000, you know, but time time is ticking away because I, I'm, I think I'm down to two and a half weeks or something. So I think we love a sprint to the finish line, don't we, as runners? So here we go. Here's the yes. challenge, Farno. Oh, gosh, um, yes. Yeah, so let's, let's do it. Yeah. And, you know, I mean... The, you can just go and go and get yourself a book. That's one thing to you could look at it rather than you know anything else. You, you get a you get a great book, and this is going straight to the New York Sellers uh, number one. You know, New York Times bestsellers. So you get an early. It you is. can say I had one of the first editions. <laughs> first yeah. edition. Yeah, yep, that's right. There's, there's kudos in that. So go for it, people. Marie, thank you so so much. We really really appreciate you coming on, and we can't wait to read these amazing stories of these amazing wahine who you've uh, gathered. You know, gather their stories and 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 the manaki and the care that you've shown for their mm. words, because that's yep. you know, it's 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 a big thing to entrust someone with your story. So thank you so so much for doing what you do, not just with this, but yes. with the whole running community, Marie. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you, Matt, for the opportunity and all the listeners. So awesome. Cool. That sounds. I mean, that that book sounds amazing. I can't wait to see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I love when people sort of do first of the kind. Yeah. You know, like you said, first edition, but first of the kind, and it took someone to just think up the idea and do it. And we were, again, we were talking off mic when we were, we were talking about pain tolerance and, and how as a endurance athlete or runner, our pain tolerances can both be sort of a, a blessing and a curse at times. But that determination is never never, never something negative, eh? And just, you know, Marie just gutsing it out and, and, and figuring out how to write a book. Yeah, yeah. Good on her. Good on her. And getting some advice as well, which is good, rather than just winging it. Right. Speaking of uh, getting advice, Eugene, you got a question? Yes, I do. I do. So Dan Jones recently in his newsletter had some good tips for winter training, uh, which uh, they sort of caught my eye because one of them was this, be prepared for your run. When you set your alarm for a dark winter morning, you need to be prepared. The hardest part of winter training is rolling out of a nice warm bed, knowing what's ahead. Have your clothes laid out, headlight handy, a pre-run brekkie ready, then suck it up for a quick exit out the door. This is also the best way to build a routine, which got me thinking, you know, we are in winter on those days when it's raining hard, the wind is howling, perhaps it's a thunderstorm, no, maybe not, but it's a horrible, horrible day and you're supposed to be heading out for a run in the morning or in the afternoon, whatever. What do you do, Matt? And if you do go, what is it that motivates you to head out the door? Hmm. Motivation's fickle, is it? Well, it's it's not fickle. Well, it is fickle, actually. Motivation is fickle and it changes over time. I'll say that some of the best running I've ever done in my life is when I've been profoundly unmotivated. But like Dan Jones says, I've been in a routine. I was just reflecting on your question because, you know, it's in the outline. We get time to think about it. One of the biggest changes to my, one of the biggest challenges to my routine is I would habitually run early in the morning. We both did. We'd run early. We'd run, you know, whenever we could carve the time out. Is doing shifts for 19 years and coming off shift work, it's taken me a good couple of years to establish a proper sleep routine and actually getting sleep and getting good sleep has been something that I'm only just really getting used to. So getting out of bed, I find challenging, not because it's warm or snuggly or I got to go for a, a snuggly, what a word, ugh, I got to go for a run, which which I, I, I love doing. It's not the weather, it's actually the sleep part. Like it feels like I've unlocked that superpower that most other human beings had, which was a good night's sleep. So that's been a real challenge in the last little while is, um, it's just kind of like I enjoy sleeping, but not sleeping in, but just like a solid eight hours is, is just, you know, for someone who, who routinely sleeps sort of between four to six hours for at all, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's a challenge for me. But what do I do? I now have a, a wife who runs ultra marathons. <laughs> so uh, she generally trains in the afternoon. So it's that sense of, you know, getting up in the morning to go for a run. If I know if someone, if, if you've got someone who's who's waiting on you, who who is, you know, you can uh, share that load, if you will, of training because both of us trying to train in the evenings is a little bit, gets a little bit t- tight with dinners and stuff. I mean, our kids are older now, so it's not that big a deal. What gets me out the door is if work's been particularly hard. And one of my favorite, favorite things to do is if I've had a really hard day at work, is go home and I'll have a run 
and then I'll get up in the morning before I go to work and have a run again. So knowing that I've done two runs in the 12 hours that I've not been at work is psychologically really cool. So setting myself up for that is really, really cool. That That's motivating for me. And I tell you what's motivating me at the moment, I've just entered Tarawera Myla and it wasn't the distance that's motivating me. It's the, it's the, it's the cost, you know, it, I've never paid that much for a race before whilst, you know, very privileged to have the means to do that. It's not inconsequential to me. So, you know, I've got at the moment, I've got 945, 45 reasons to get up in the morning <laughs> and run. So how I've squared it away is each kilometer is a dollar. Each kilometer in training is a dollar. You know, and then so you factor in accommodation, petrol, training, shoes, gear, all that sort of stuff. I'm trying to recoup that, or sort of offset that. And so that's that's what I've sort of said to myself, like each K you run, that's a dollar. Uh, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to disrespect both the distance and I'm not going to disrespect the, um, the amount of money that it was to enter by not, not doing it. So that's what's kind of getting me out the door at the moment. So l- almost literally holding self accountable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and knowing also, you know, like my family is going to come down with me. There, there will be people, and it is that thing, isn't it? There's people interested in seeing if I can do it. There's people who will be invested in seeing if I can do it. The, it's going to be a long day for everyone, you know, and, and this, no one's an island. It's, it's, it's almost it's that process of giving it that respect and also respecting the people who are going to come down and uh, respecting the people who are putting on the race, you know, respecting the just – showing some respect to it that that's really kind of, yeah that accountability is really motivating just one question on that though you're not trying to do maths while you run are you no it's well so it's one why dollar I, a, I mean i know it's one dollar a kilometer but you know once you get a bit deep we, we'll just be lost <laughs> right, run with a calculator yes run with a calculator or a spreadsheet Abacus. open yeah because exactly. what could go wrong nothing i that's another thing too geez speaking of motivating uh, spreadsheets I we'll see how we go with that but um I might need to call in some assistance yes yes indeed what about what about you bro so I was thinking about the the weather when the weather is because I, I a few years ago I well quite a few years ago now I got into the habit of running early and it changed my running absolutely because I used to have to try and squeeze runs in when I could and often I'd get to the end of the day and I hadn't been for a run and I would find a reason that I couldn't go or genuine or not, you know, it would become an excuse not to run. But when I started running in the morning and just like it just became a habit, just get up, go for a run, get up, go for a run. So I, yeah, I really built that habit and it, it made a big, big difference to my running just knowing that that's what I did, getting out and going for a run. But still, when you're lying there, Maybe you've woken up just before the alarm's gone off because you've heard the rain smashing into the roof uh, or the wind. You do need to have some motivation or have some tactics to be able to do that. So for me, it's always a couple of things. One, remembering getting out the door is the hardest thing. As soon as you're out in that rain, as soon as you're out in that wind, it's fine. You know, it's just that first step of getting outside. You're not going to melt. You know, and I'm not talking about extreme, extreme weather, you know, not advocating going for a run on a cyclone or anything, but how many times have you been in a run and you're out in the rain and the wind and it's, there's something actually invigorating and life-giving about it, being smashed around by the weather? I quite like it. It just this morning. Reminds, you of, <laughs> reminds you of life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 100%. But it can be hard to get out the door. But just remember, getting out the door is the hardest thing. Once you're out, you're away. As Dan said, have your gear ready, which I think is critical, you know, in the morning, you know, the night before, just get your stuff ready so that you just get up, get your gear, go. And that involves for me now just maybe checking what the weather's going to be doing the next day. So is it going to be a bad day? You know, have I got a jacket ready that I can chuck on if I need it because there's nothing wrong, <laughs> nothing worse than scratching around in the dark trying to find, you know, trying to find a jacket, trying not to wake up the house, you know. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I do that. Uh, and having good gear as well. You know, if you've got, a decent jacket and the right protection for the right weather, then that makes all the difference. As you've mentioned, having a goal that is 
the best motivation. Of course, you know, you know that if you don't go for a run, you know, you're missing out on a training opportunity. That is great motivation. But so too is knowing that you've got to go meet someone. So, you know, we've been for plenty of runs, haven't we? hundred percent. Where it's like you wake up in the morning, it's pouring with rain. Uh, I remember one run that we did at, I, I ran out to meet you at Barlow. You'd actually started earlier because you were doing some hill repeats and it was the worst. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I was like, I don't know. I don't want to get up. This, oh, my God. This is awful. But I got up, ran over to Barlow, met you there, and it was awesome. We had a great yeah. time. And it was just that pressure of knowing that I would be kind of, you know, letting you down or – and also, you know, just not going to get to see my mate. So that's that's something is if you know that you're going to be meeting someone, that's great motivation to get out the door. So, yeah, those are some of the things that I – think come in handy but I mean mostly I just I, I just enjoy running in those conditions actually and much more than actually than the heat like it's, and, and there's something is, is it's funny isn't it you talk about good gear and again that's a privileged position right because we've and we've both been in positions I mean when I started I was like oh I don't have a jacket or I don't you know and then but when you have a piece of gear and and I guess there's gear and there's gear right and there's gear that's going to give you bang for buck so for me a thing that you know I love, I'll nerd out on headlamps all yes. day long. I love headlamps and I do love having a good uh, seam seal jacket mm. with a hood. Uh, <laughs> and I know what both those things are. No Tarawera comments for me. But having a nice jacket eh, is really, really important when it's hammering down and, and yep. a bit cold. But like a good headlamp that you know is not going to fail you. What, are you, what um, are you using at the moment for your headlamps? So, and this is completely, again, I'm this sorry, is... Sorry, I, I know that I've probably just opened up another 40 minutes of the of the podcast here. Um, and this is not like a, this is something that I purchased with my own money. This isn't like a party political broadcast or anything. I have the, I've got a couple, uh, the Petzl Now RL, which I really, really love. I had the first generation of of that and I was so stoked with it. And I, unfortunately, I was doing a race, chucked it in the bucket came back to collect it at the finish no petzl now in the bucket so went yes that was that was a that was a bitter pill to swallow but i've got the newest generation of that the petzl now which is like a 1500 lumen reactive lighting love it light easy and got a, just a, just accumulated so i'm a petzl fan so also got the gosh what is it is it a sprite or a this the, the blue and white one we've both got one the yeah, you're lumen. looking at me yeah. like I know. This is, I mean, regular listeners will know this. I am absolutely hopeless. I couldn't tell you what any of my gear is. I am just abominable when it comes to remembering brands. So I, I'm, I'm terrible. Matt can tell you everything inside out, but I'm just, I don't know. It's a, it's a light. I turn it on. I can't even remember what color it. I think it is blue. I think you're right. I think it's blue and white. I think that's right. It's a Petzl Swift. That's what it is. The nine hundred, and again, nine hundred lumen with the reactive lighting. Love reactive lighting. It, where we run, it's a highway. There's cars, so I love the fact that if a car shines its headlamp at me, the headlamp dims. I really, really like that. Yeah. So I'm a Petzl guy, and I know that there's heaps of other popular brands. I've also had a pair of A ups. I love them too. They're a bit heavy compared to the Petzl, but um, that's what really gets me. Like it's funny, isn't it? Like I get to put on a headlamp, you get like super excited about it. It is, it is you know, if you've got good gear that you like, it, it, that's another motivation, isn't it? It's like getting, yeah. to, getting to use it. I remember in the early 90s, I had a jacket that I'd put on and honestly it was like wearing a sail. <laughs> it was so bad. Like, you know, any breeze whatsoever and I'd just puff up like a, yep. like a mainsail on a on a yacht it was just so bad so i really appreciate having a decent jacket these days although we did encounter at w2k when we ran in those horrific conditions that time and that was a fun run that was horrible horrible weather uh, but we had fun didn't we yes yeah but the the thing of how do you keep your hood on yeah that was quite a conundrum quite a conundrum and i am pay, i am praying that that is uh that Whatever Gareth's doing, he he will be doing it again, uh, and we get a good another good weather year because sure. that was heckers. It was full heckers. <laughs> <laughs> good fun though, good fun. But it was disappointing we didn't get to run the whole course. But anyway, yeah. And I tell you what, I think your your point is the most germane of all. It's getting up, getting to run with your mates, and and when we can run together again, I will get up during a firestorm to go for a run with you. I am so excited. 
I would do anything to go for a run in any conditions yep. right now. Yeah. Uh, so this is a bit of a moot point for me, but it's, you know, how, how often do you regret going for a run? Very, very ne- rarely. I can't think of any. No, no, no never. Right. Okay. Well, look, uh, you know, we will see each other soon and I, yes. I hope that your eye gets better and, and everything like that. Uh, <laughs> oh, so, Parrot. My Parrot dude. arrives soon. <laughs> Portrait of Dorian Gray here. There's a hundred year old man wandering around somewhere in Fenua Pai yeah. looking super good. Hey, I forgot to mention. Yes. I was out at the weekend and I had on the sweatshirt I'm currently wearing, which is Ultra Child Kosciuszko. Yep. Thank you. And a group of Polish people surrounded me and started talking <laughs> at me. I don't know whether they thought I could speak Polish. Because and they were saying Kosh Koshko, Kosh Koshko, which of course is not how it's said in Australia. But yeah, there we go. <laughs> You never know, wearing your trail gear out, Yes, the connections you're going to make. That's right. That's right. Now you are a son of a son of Poland. But look. I, that's right. I love Poland. I went to Poland in the mid-90s. It was, yep. it was a great place to visit. Mm. Right. Geography, gear reviews, literature, uh, DCR aid station has it all. But that's it for this week. Thank you to our DCR aid station crew which is you lot and stay tuned for the quote unquote regular DCR podcast next week when we have an amazing guest lined up for an incredible chat. Kaki te anu. Thanks, Rippy. <laughs>